This tutorial is part of my course on Udemy. Check out the description for more info. Hey there, in this lecture, we'll be creating the pickaxe. Now here, I've imported a sprite for the pickaxe. I'll open it. Now in the sprite, we need to change the origin to bottom center. So the pickaxe is going to rotate from that point. Now let's go to objects and add an object for the pickaxe. Now I'll simply assign the sprite. For now, we're not gonna add any code in this object. So let's go to the player. I'll open its create event. In this event, we're gonna create the pickaxe. So I'll add this. Here it's simply creating an instance of the pickaxe object at the player's position. Its ID is stored in a variable called health item. So any item that the player can hold, be it a pickaxe, a sword or something else, will be stored in this variable. Now I'm gonna add the end step event. We'll move the pickaxe in this event. So I'll add this. Here it simply checks if the held item exists in the room. If it does, it simply sets the item's position to the player's position. So the item is basically going to stick to the player. Now let's add the destroy event. In this event, I'll add this. If the held item exists, it's going to destroy it. So when the player instance is destroyed, the held item will be destroyed as well. So let's run the game and see what we have. Now the pickaxe is there, but it's behind the player. So we need to fix up the depth and adjust its position. So first for the depth, I'll open O controller. Here I'll open the end step event. Now inside this width block that runs for all instances, we need to add an exception for the pickaxe. So I'll add this here. First of all it checks if the player instance exists. Then we get the ID of the player's held item. Then we check if this instance is the player's held item. So basically this code is only gonna run for the player's held item. So its depth will be reduced by 8. This way it'll appear above the player. You can also say that it's 8 points above the ground. Now let's go back to the player object. In the end step event, we're gonna adjust the position of the held item. So after the x, I'll add this. The x position of the item is offset by minus 3 based on the player's image x scale. So wherever the player faces, the item will always be on the correct side. Now for the y, I'll simply add 3 to it. So let's run the game again. And now you can see the pickaxe. No matter where you face, it's always in the correct position. But the depth is not correct yet, cause if you move down, you can't see it. So to fix that, let's go back to O controller. Instead of subtracting H from the depth, I'll change it to 10. So this should fix the pickaxe's depth issue. In the conditions, we're running a function and getting a variable from an instance. Now both of these things are done in all instances because of this with statement. So for example, if there are 10 instances in the room, then this function is going to run 10 times in one step. So instead, we can make it run only once and store its result in a variable. We can do the same for reading this variable from our player. So at the top of this event, I'll add this. Here I'm checking if the player exists and storing its result in this local variable. This way the function only runs once. Now this variable stores the ID of the player's held item. So currently it's set to no one, which means no instance. If the player does exist, it's set to the player's held item. So this way we read the player's held item variable only once. Then in the conditions, you can fill in the local variables instead. So this works the same way, but it's more optimized. So now let's run the game. And now the pickaxe is being displayed perfectly. Now we need to make the pickaxe usable. So we'll actually be able to break the breakable objects in the next lecture. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're interested in the course, check out the description. Make sure you subscribe for more tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.